So I'll say there it is, and I'll copy that across. Now this might look quite abstract, but let's go ahead and I'll make this whole thing font group brackets. So there's our structure, and then I'll make some blue data input fields over here, which I'm gonna right click and say, this will be blue and bordered. And then our date field on this side, we need to format the date. So I'm gonna right click, format the cells, and we'll say I need to make it like some kind of date field. I don't want the year really, so I just need the month and the day, so I'll pick this one. Okay, so now our first transaction is on 1-1. One, one. So remember what we did in QuickBooks is we, we entered an estimate. So there is no transaction, no journal entry for the estimate because there's no effect on the financial statements. So then the first transaction we did after that was we sent out an invoice for the deposit, but we told the invoice to, to uh, record it a little bit uh, to, the, to the billings account. So let me just check that out one more time and we'll, we'll record that first transaction just so you can see what I'm talking about. So we're gonna say we had an invoice and invoices increase accounts receivable, but then we, and then the other side usually goes to revenue driven by the item, but then we've reduced the revenue and instead put it into the billings account. Therefore, we had an increase in accounts receivable and the other side going to the billings account. So let's do that. I'm gonna say, all right, we know, I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna do this by going equals accounts receivable is gonna be the debit account. And then the other side is gonna be equals the billings account. And the amount is gonna be, I'm gonna pull it from my data on the left. It's gonna be equal to that $10,000. The, the billings is gonna be negative because that's how we're gonna re reflect our credits. So negative of the number of above it is the billings account, 10,000. If I record that to my trial balance, I can go into my, my accounts receivable in M4, say equals, and go over to my accounts receivable, 10,000. And then in I4, or I, I can go to M6 and say equals and go over to my billings. So there's the first transaction uh, we put in place and it sums back up to zero, right? Before we recorded the second one, it was out of balance. Now it sums back up to zero. And then if I record the second thing that happened on 115, we received a payment. So if I go back on over and say, all right, the next thing that happened uh, is that is that we got a payment here. So the payment's gonna reduce the the accounts receivable and go into the checking account. So I'm gonna say equals the checking account goes up with a debit, accounts receivable goes down, and it's also gonna be for the 10,000. So I'm just gonna say equals the 10,000 from the journal entry above, negative of the one above it is gonna be that. And then I'm gonna go checking account in M3 it's gonna be equal to, we'll pick up the 10,000, and then the accounts receivable is gonna go down. There's something in accounts receivable already, so I'm gonna double click on it, go to the end of it, and say plus this number, which is negative, because it's a credit, from a, from a plus and minus standpoint, it's gonna bring this one down to zero, right? Debits and credit plus and minus brings it back down to zero. So there we have it. Now I'm gonna add one more little touch to this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is our check number down here that we are in balance. So what I'd like to do is say, if this is out of balance, I wanna make it red. And if it's in balance, I wanna make it green. So I'm gonna do a conditional formatting by going to the home tab, style, conditional formatting. And I'd like the rules and say, if it's greater than, greater than, I'm gonna see that there's, I'm gonna account for the possibility for there be rounding error of let's say $2 rounding error. So if it's off by $2 high, I would like you to turn it red. So I'm gonna say, okay. So if I delete this, for example, it turns red because it's off, it's high by 10,000. If it's low by 10,000, I'm gonna select these. I want you to turn it red. Conditional formatting, highlight. If it's less than negative two, turn it red. So in other words, if I delete this one now, 
negative 10,000 turns red. Positive, negative turns red. If it's between negative two and two, we want it to be green. So I'm gonna go home tab, style conditional formatting between negative two and two, if it's within that range, because it should be zero, but if it's in the range of negative two to two, I want you to be green so that we can account for, give it a little room for rounding. All right, and so now it's green. So if it goes negative, we're out of balance, turns red. If it's positive, out of balance. If it's zero or within the range of one to two, you know, negative two, then we're still good because hopefully that's just rounding and we're still okay. All right, so there's our there's our general worksheet. Again, if you don't want to put together the worksheet, that's okay because we can, but we, I think it's a useful tool to follow along with the worksheet so that we can see the journal entries and the impact on just like a trial balance type of format. And then we can take that and add the added layers of QuickBooks, which adds in like reporting the, the financial statements by date and reporting the financial statements by class, you know, and by project and, and that kind of stuff that w adds like a dimension instead of a two dimensional thing that we're looking at here that kind of adds like another kind of three dimensional kind of component that we can manipulate the data in that way. Let's spell check it over here. Spell check. All right, that's our process. So going forward, we will uh, we'll continue recording. We'll, we'll start to think about what actually happens with the costs and then we'll continue our billing process and think about the revenue recognition kind of issues as we think about our billing.